Would you like to learn how to put yourself to sleep like that? Yeah. Want to do it now? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, thank you for volunteering to go up and learn something interesting. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Well, as I said, in order to learn how to put yourself to sleep, first you have to learn how to go into a mild trance, a light trance, not a really deep one, just a light trance. I call it your ordinary everyday trance. Okay? So I'd like you to sit with your feet on the floor and your hands on your lap. There you go. Good. Now, I'm going to show you one of the ways that I learned to go into trance that is very, very simple. I want you to lift one finger of either hand. One finger, way up like that. I can't. Oh, well, <laughs> as far as you can. Okay. That's it. Okay, good. If you prefer, you can use the other hand. Or if you prefer, you could use both of them. I don't care. You choose. In fact, some people lift all the fingers of both hands. And it still works. No matter. But Let's start with a finger, okay? Now, I want you to hold that finger up until your subconscious takes over holding it up, at which point you're going to stop paying attention to it, but it'll stay there because your subconscious will hold it up, okay? So, what you do is simply, <clears throat> you test it, okay? I'm holding it, now is my subconscious holding it? Uh, and go down on, I'm going to hold it up for a little longer. Now, subconscious is like a child. So I want to address a little bit while you're holding your finger up. Keep concentrating on the finger meanwhile. You don't have to listen to what I'm going to say a little bit, but I need to talk to her. She's the boss. She's the boss, yeah. So, little Bev. I want to thank you profoundly for all that you've done for Big Bet here all her life. You've taken care of her. You've protected her. You've watched over her. You've managed her life moment by moment. You have regulated her heartbeat and her breathing, her health, her interests. deserves all that you've done for her over the years. And little Ben, I'm asking you now to cooperate with me in helping Bev, Big Bev, to learn how to go to sleep easily when she wants to. Only when she wants to. And right now, you can help her by holding that finger up outside of her awareness while she does something else that I'm going to ask her to do. And Big Bad, I'm going to ask you now to count to yourself quite silently. I want you to count backwards from 300 by sevens. I'll start you. 300, 293. 286, and continue while that finger stays up there effortlessly. Now you have a good life. And I know that because you're still above ground. Being above ground means you're having a good life. Ah. You have had some stress in your life. Some of it we all have, but some of it is unique to you. I want you to know that your subconscious loves you. And she's been taking care of you so long. And she's committed, committed to continuing. And from now on, when you go to bed and you want to 
sleep. You lie down, you relax. And in your mind, I want you to simply imagine snapping your fingers like that. Just imagine. And when you do, you will fall into a very deep, restful sleep. Easily and effortlessly. Easily and effortlessly. And with another part of your mind while you're still counting, counting, I want you to feel hopeful. I want you to create in yourself a machine that generates hope. Now, I don't know what it looks like. You can see it when you think about it. A machine that turns on your hope engine, and your excitement engine. Because you've been going through a serious trial, and you need to be good to yourself every day. And when you are committed to doing that, and to giving yourself that easy sleep with a snap of the fingers in your imagination, when you're committed to that, then I'd like you to come back out into the room, come out of the trance, go back into your normal state of awareness, feeling wide awake and alert, refreshed, <laughs> as if you just had a little nap. I certainly relaxed. <laughs> yes, how about that? Now, are you going to be surprised tonight when you fall asleep? I hope, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm going to be asleep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. excellent. Thank you for volunteering. Oh, yeah. Thank you, that was, that was beautiful what you did. Because I do not sleep well. Well, tomorrow you will call me if you're not sleep. If you don't sleep well tonight, you call me, we'll do some more. Oh. Because I never know for sure that the message got accepted by the subconscious, and if it doesn't, I've got a dozen other ways of getting the message across. So it's just a matter of uh, persisting until you find the right one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any questions about what you just saw or heard? You might wonder what part the raised finger played. Why'd I have her hold the finger up? You notice she held it up right to the end. Mm -hmm. But at the end she wasn't paying attention. You weren't paying attention to it. It was just your subconscious held it up. That kind of autonomic response, if you will, is well known in the literature. And it's amazing how many people don't recognize it. I mean, you know, psychiatrists and psychologists, they know it as a phenomenon, this persistence of, I mean, I could just as well have had her arm up like this, or a leg, <laughs> and it would have stayed. And in fact, that's one way to induce a, uh, an anesthetic. When I had a client who was getting ready to have a baby, I had her do that with a leg. <laughs> and then I told her to forget about the leg. Well, when, actually, I had to do first one leg, then two legs, like this. You can't see them back there, but both my feet are off the floor. And it was like a general paralysis up through the, through the hips. I said, now just forget about those legs. And guess what? She was anesthetized. And she learned to do that. And when she went to have the baby, she was able to do that and have no pain. She delivered without pain. I take it back. She wanted to have a little bit of an ordeal, so she allowed herself a little bit of pain. But it was under control. <clears throat> That's how we did it. Same thing as the finger, only with the legs. First one, then the other, then both. Forget about it. Well, to forget about it, you've got to wipe out the sensation. Now I got anesthesia. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't holding my finger up. I mean, I no. was holding That's right. 
So I knew when that happened, because I've been observing it for a long time, okay? And I knew when it happened, you're in a trance. A lot of people who know that that happens don't know it is a trance. Milton Erickson knew, <laughs> made extensive use of it. And I can do other things like that. Once you've done that with the finger, we could have your, your, your arm automatically raise the hand without your being even aware of it. And hold it up. <coughs> and while this hand rises, this hand could be pushing down automatically. Well, fact is, you don't have to pay conscious attention to the muscles when they're controlled by the subconscious. I can leave that hand there indefinitely, you see, because I'm already in a light trance. And my hand is just, there it is. <laughs> or I could take conscious control of it and have it go down again. And I can tell when someone raises their hand, whether it's their conscious or subconscious, doing it. Because the motion is different. And when you know what to recognize, you can tell. So if someone fakes it, I say, no, no, do it with your other mind. <laughs> your other mind, please. <laughs> okay. I am prepared to teach you or anyone who wants to learn for a nominal amount of money. I'm talking about $5 for a two-hour session. Anyone who wants to can come and learn this stuff, any of it. I want you to tell your friends. I want you to bring the gang. Because this is valuable, valuable stuff to know how to do your life. You don't need someone else doing your life. You need to be in charge of it. And these tools give you that. Okay. I think I'm done for tonight. Okay, does anyone feel unfinished about anything I've said? I could make an observation that something you said makes me think of um, when you talk about trances and uh, specifically uh, the trances that people find themselves in when they're consuming the uh, television shows, things like that. That's a very suggestible state yeah. that you get into there. And, um, you know, we're in a trance. Well, I've, it's, it's been a while since I've used television as a form of, of uh, media to entertain myself with. But... Um, it's interesting that a lot of the messages that come across while we're in a suggestible state teach us to, you know, not want to trust our neighbors and things like that, that really, like, humankind has built itself on trusting their neighbors. That's how communities form. That's how anything organized ever happens. But for some reason, we're being told under this suggestible state that you should be afraid of scary criminals and you should... Uh, not trust your neighbors and you know your husband's probably cheating on you and all of these things right like it's so terrible it is you're absolutely yeah. right yeah. and you know and we're in this state and we're t and, and we accept that and it, it shapes us right well you know it's time well, let's to, stop it's time say, to let's it. stop saying that we do that right it's, it's time to that's what i'm saying is as as a, that's what we've been doing and it's time to take yeah. the driver's wheel i mean absolutely. some of these techniques i'm i'm in my 30s and some of these techniques I learned when I was a younger person yeah. uh, who uh, was very, I was a self-sabotager. Self Everything was, I always would look at something like it was somebody else's fault and, or, you know, all the reasons Typical. that my life was terrible, you know, was, um, you know, that's just because, the, oh, there, you know, it was like, a, you'd feel jealousy, you'd feel things like, and, and I don't have those things anymore. I have a lot more hope and just feel more in control and in my own destiny. Good, excellent. Great, By the way, great techniques. I need to say, I do accept donations. You're under no obligation to give me anything. But if you feel generous, then I have to put a donation in. Okay? Because, you know, I need to start making a living again. <laughs> and uh, sooner or later, I'm going to have people making donations. When I give to classes, then there's a fee. Okay, it'll be a small fee, but there will be a fee. Okay. Well, I thank When's you all the next for being class? here. When's the next class? I have a question. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. My mother was this way, and I am to a certain extent. Um, my subconscious tells me that somebody's died. 
uh -huh. or that person comes to me in a dream yeah. and says I've got to change an address. Uh -huh. The last was a very, very close friend just uh, in January. Wow. And she came to me and said, I'm not going to live there anymore. She was in a care center. Uh -huh. He says, I've got a new address. Well, yes, heaven. Right. But anyhow, how, and my mother could, um, she would also be able to, would have this. She was, she had the dream before my brother was killed. Mm. Wow. Which is tough. Mm -hmm. I haven't how, had eight. How old was he then? Eight. 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 Uh, you how does know your how that subconscious do stuff? that? I can't tell you how, except for one little piece. We have the conscious mind, then we have the subconscious mind, which is up here. Okay, the subconscious is our unconscious processes that are in us. Then we have the unconscious. And the unconscious is partly here and partly out there in the universe, so to speak. The collective unconscious you've heard of is something we share. We are connected to everyone and everything else in the universe through that unconscious. That shared collective unconscious is where it takes place. How it takes place, what do I know? I just know that so it, it does. It's so often like I will think of someone so much one day, yeah. call them, well, I just the doctor and I found out I whatever the uh -huh. has happened or something you know, there was a reason for my Yes. There are reasons. I know. There are no coincidences, but there are coincidences. Things coincide. We have an experience that coincides with something that happened somewhere else. This interconnection is... You know, there are people who, scientists, who describe it as a manifestation of the quantum universe. The holographic quantum universe. The idea is that everything in the universe is intimately connected with everything else. All the information that exists in the universe is available everywhere. And if that's true, then an event that happens light years away could be discerned here, now, not waiting for the light to bring the signal, but some other way. Now, there was, in science, there was a first person who postulated a mechanism for that. Today they call that either action at a distance or quantum entanglement, where something that happens way over there is entangled with something local. And you know, the person who thought that up the first time, turns out was my father. He worked with Einstein, and this is something they worked out mathematically. And, you know, he's still famous for it today, even though he's long gone. But that quantum entanglement is the first truly scientific intimation we have of how such amazing things take place. We don't know all the answers about it. We've just got this little piece of information, and we're working on it. I call it ESP. That's as good a name as any. Well, because, I mean, I lived in California, my daughter lived in Oklahoma, and we, we were in a car wreck, my husband and I, huh. and it was at 10 o'clock at night in, in San Diego, yeah. and at midnight in Oklahoma, she sat right up in bed, and she said, Mom, she didn't know I was in a car wreck until, right. until the next day, and she, she called the next morning, she said, are you okay? And I said, well, we were in a car wreck last night and my knee's injured and I don't want crutches and stuff. And she uh -huh. said, what time was it? And I said, right when she sat up. 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And she said, I sat right up in bed at, at midnight. Wow. So we call it ESP because I can, sure. I can be around the house and say, Vicki, call me. Vicki, call me. Vicki, call me. And she'll call me. Mm -hmm. so That's cool. I, <laughs> well, I suspect, you know, ESP stands for extrasensory perception. Uh -huh. I think it's a misnomer. I think we have senses that we don't know we have. It's not one of the usual senses, but I'm sure it is some kind of a sense. Right? If it weren't, you wouldn't have had the message. Or she wouldn't have had the message.
Well, no, she would have done it. I mean, no, there was no way that for, for her to get that message. Right, so, yeah. except there obviously was a way. Yeah. 